Hi everybody and welcome to Enjoy English with Mrs. A. I'm Mrs. A and today we're going to speak about all the necessary tips for your Cambridge speaking exams. That's right, for all Cambridge speaking exams. So independently, if you've decided to go for a B1, B2, C1 or C2, in this video, we'll have a look at tips that you can apply to every Cambridge exam. And you're gonna have to trust me because I've been teaching for 12 years. Now, there are seven things you need to remember if you want to achieve that perfect dialogue. You all know that for all the Cambridge exams, the speaking part is done with a partner. It's highly encouraged and Cambridge allows this for you to prepare the Cambridge exam with a partner. The seven ingredients that all dialogues must have are agreeing with your partner, disagreeing with your partner, speculating, adding the linking words and smart adjectives, asking questions and comparing contrast. Very important. Let's imagine you agree with your partner. Now you're not going to say, I agree all the time. There are options. I feel the same way. I must admit you're right. I must say you're spot on. These are different ways to show agreement. And if it's one thing Cambridge examiners want is to see you juggling with words and expressions. When you disagree, you don't just say I disagree because there are many ways to say exactly the same thing. I see your point, but I must disagree seeing that. I don't feel that way. Nevertheless, we can see that. You all know that the key to a successful dialogue is making it seem like table tennis. Say a sentence or two, ask your partner a question. Your partner needs to say a sentence or two and ask you a question in return. The typical questions you ask yourselves are not always, do you agree? Do you agree? Don't you agree? No. Play around because being repetitive is not encouraged. Like for example, how do you feel about, or, but what would you do if, or do you mind if I add something, if you want to say something else? Or for example, what's your take on? This is another way to ask, what's your opinion? What do you think? Then we have the linking words, although nevertheless in spite of, furthermore, play around. The adjectives and specifically the smart adjectives, not the easy ones. Adjectives that you wouldn't normally use. Adjectives that are high level. Like for example, instead of saying clean, immaculate. This also goes instead of saying perfect. Instead of saying big, you can say substantial. Instead of beautiful, you can say magnificent. And there's so many smart adjectives, you have a lot to choose from. What I'm saying here is not that you have to learn a million things, but you need to learn a bit more. It's not gonna be easy to use all these new words at the beginning, but you have to try. Then of course, an important part when speaking is speculating. Imagining what the characters are doing and why they are doing it. Using expressions like, perhaps they are, maybe they are trying to, they seem worried or they seem happy, or they look like, and the best part, compare and contrast. Because when you have to speak about two pictures, you will probably receive pictures that belong to the same topic, Let's imagine Christmas versus Halloween, okay? So you have to compare and contrast the two pictures saying how they are similar and how they are different because some activities, in this case, okay, some celebrations, if we, if we have a Halloween picture versus a Christmas picture, we need to speak about Christmas versus Halloween. And I'm going to say that some celebrations can last longer than others. Some are cheaper, others are more expensive. Some celebrations are more popular among kids and teenagers, while others are for all ages. 
They both happen every year. People spend more money preparing for Christmas rather than for Halloween. Or it depends on you. Both celebrations can be quite dynamic. They're both seasonal activities. One happens every October in autumn, in the fall, and one happens in winter. As we said before, a successful dialogue will include all these ingredients, agreeing and disagreeing, asking questions, comparing and contrasting, speculating, adding the linking words and smart adjectives. And all this is incredibly necessary for a successful result. This goes for any speaking exam that allows a partner. This is what is expected of you do it during the dialogue. And learning how to do this effectively is very important. Like always, practice makes perfect. So let's have a look at these two pictures and imagine a dialogue. Student A would say, here we have two pictures showing us different types of leisure activities. Do you think reading has any disadvantages? Student B, well, I must say that reading is a sedentary activity, so it doesn't help you get fit like snowboarding does. On the other hand, it's much cheaper. What's your take on this? Student A, I totally agree with you. The only disadvantages snowboarding has, as far as I'm concerned, is that it's a seasonal sport, so you either wait to travel and you also need to buy or rent the special gear. What are the advantages of reading? in your opinion. Student B, I believe reading helps you improve your vocabulary, especially if you are reading a book in a foreign language. Do you think that reading has any disadvantages? Student A, maybe if you read novels at school instead of studying, that can be a disadvantage. Also, if all you do in your free time is read because you need your vitamin D. Student B, that's where I must disagree, because you can also read in the park or outdoors. Student A. I see your point. So to conclude, snowboarding is great because you get all the adrenaline, it's dynamic, and it keeps you fit. And reading helps you disconnect and improves your knowledge. Student B. That's right. This is an example of a successful dialogue with all the ingredients. Until next time, make sure you practice with your partners and don't forget that this video is sponsored by EnjoyEnglish.es, the academy that sends the teacher to you. So if you guys are very busy and you want to have a class at home and you live in Valencia, Pamplona or Zaragoza, they can send the teacher to you. If you live in any other part of the world, online classes, Thank you so much. Check out Enjoy English and come back for a new video. Don't forget to subscribe and like and comment. And good luck with your exam.